So today we're going to start 4j, so we're going to divide it into two parts. But both of them involve solving simultaneous equations. So remember, that means one or more equations that have a common solution. So whatever x is in one, it's the same number in the other. Right? And we're going to look at two different methods. And the method you use, because we've already looked at one, we looked at graphing. And graphing is only good if you already have the graph drawn for you. Otherwise, it doesn't really work out that well. It takes too long to graph it. And again, sometimes the points don't line up so that they're easy to read. So we're going to look at for the first method, which is substitution. And you need this part to be able to do the next method. So pay close attention. So the first thing is we want to see if it is actually set up to use substitution. And the way you do that is look at is one of the equations solved for one of the variables? So is one of the equations sorry, solved for one of the variables? And now let me remind you what that means. Remember when we, when, we, when we rearranged the simple interest formula, we wanted it to be solved for P instead of, or solved for R instead of P. We rearranged those letters. So here's what it'll look like. You'll get Y equals X plus or minus some number or x equals y plus or minus some number. If one of the equations looks like that, notice on this one the y is all by itself. On this one the x is all by itself. If that's the case, then you can use substitution to solve this, this system of equations, this simultaneous equations. Now, if it's not like that, it's easier just to use the other method, All right? And the other method is kind of the workhorse, and it's, always, it's, it's a little more complex than this one, but it's always the one that most students do better on or remember more. So here's what you're going to look at. See if they are, they're like this. Now, the book will tell you that they need to be solved for y. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be solved for y. I don't know why they do that. It's ridiculous. As long as one of the letters is by itself, then you can use substitution. And the reason is, if y is equal to this group of terms, this stuff here, in one of the equations, then y is equal to that same thing in the other equation. So we can substitute it in and solve. If x is equal to this stuff in this equation, then it's equal to the same stuff in the other equation, right? It's because we know that they have a common solution. So once you've determined that you can use substitution to solve the, the equation, simply substitute that value. Now, it's always going to be 1. It's, it's never going to be both of them. I, yeah. Substitute that value into the other equation. If you substitute right back into where you started, you'll get right back, it, you won't do any good. You'll never get a solution. But you substitute it into the other equation. So most of the time, teachers and books will have you label one of them equation one and the other one equation two, or A or B. Again, the names don't have anything to do with solving it, but it does, ha it does keep you organized so that you can do it and make sure that you're doing the, the right thing in the right place. Okay? Step three. Solve that new equation. Because you've just stuck some stuff into it. So now what's going to happen is if you replace the y with something with x's, then you have all x's across. If you replace the x's with y's, then you have all y's. And we can solve an equation that has that's all x's or all y's. We just can't solve an equation that has have x's and y's in it. Right? Okay, so you're going to solve that new equation. And when you do, you're going to get 
x equals some number or y equals some number. Remember the hashtag is the number symbol, right? So you're going to be either solving for x or solving for y. It just depends on the equation. It, it doesn't matter. But if you know what x is, then I can substitute again to find y. Okay? If you know what y is, you can substitute that in place of the y and find your x value. So that's the last step. Substitute that value into the first equation. The value of x or y. Yep, the value of x or y into the first equation and solve. And that'll give you the other ones. And when I'm talking about the first equation, I'm talking about this thing up here, the one that was already solved for y or x. If you substitute there, there's a lot less math to do. You could substitute into either equation, but if you do, then it's going to be there's more math for you to do, right? And it's, there's no point in doing that. You do need to really watch your signs. And remember that if you substitute a bracket in place of a letter, then you have, are two terms in place of a letter, then you have to use a bracket, right? If you have more than one term, it's safer just anytime you substitute anything, use brackets because it'll keep your operations true. You'll make fewer sign errors, etc. Okay. It's as simple as that. You're just going to substitute. But since we have two variables, you're going to substitute twice. So let's do an example together. And then, well, I'll do an example. And then we'll do some examples together. All right. So let me just go to the book. So it says, solve the following pairs of simultaneous equations. Notice they don't tell you which method to use because you're free to choose whatever method you want. If you wanted to graph these and then solve them graphically, who cares? But this one is a classic substitution because if you look at this top equation, notice that it's y equals x minus 1. That y is all by itself on one side, yes? That means that substitution will always be the easiest path for you, right? Now, the other one is 3x plus 2y equals 8. So it's, it doesn't have the y on all by itself. So we'll call this one the first one, and we'll call this one the second one. And all we have to do then is substitute those values. So we know that our y is equal to x minus 1. Well, if it's equal to x minus 1 in this equation, then that means y here is equal to x minus 1 as well. So we're just going to substitute that in. So the x, 3x won't change, plus 2 times, here's the stuff that I'm going to put in place of my y, because that's what it says y is equal to. I'll just put in x minus 1, and that equals 8. So all I did was just plug in the stuff that I knew y was equal to in place of y from the other, in the other equation. Don't plug it in here, it won't work. You'll get x minus 1 equals x minus 1. You'll always get 0 equals 0 at the end. It won't work. Now all I need to do is solve this. So you have brackets, so you always start there. We have x minus 1. x and 1 are not like terms, so they can't be combined. There is no exponent on the bracket, but there is a coefficient or a multiplier of positive 2. So that means take positive 2 times both of the terms inside. So bring down your 3x, bring down your 8. Positive 2 times x is positive 2x. Make sure you include the sign, or else you're not going to have the right sign when you start to combine these things. Positive 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. We've gotten rid of the brackets. Next thing we look for when we're solving an equation are fractions, but we don't have any. Then we look to see if there are any like terms that are on the same side. And there are, and because of substitution, there almost always are, okay? So 3x's plus 2 more x's makes 5x's minus 2 
equals 8. Then, the next thing I need to do is get the x term by itself by moving that minus 2. The opposite of minus 2 is add 2 to both sides, which gives me 5x equals 10. So those subtract away. 5x literally means 5 times x. The opposite of multiply by 5 is divide by 5. So we'll divide by both sides by 5, and that gives me x is equal to 2. So now I know what my x value is, is the value for my x value. And what I'll do is I'll plug it back into that first equation, the original equation that I used for substitution. You could plug it here, but there's a lot more math that would go on there. You would have to solve that equation. But this one already has y equals x minus 1. So all I have to do is just plug in my 2 in place of my x. y equals 2 minus 1, so y equals 1. So in this particular su system of equations, or simultaneous equation, we have x equals 2 and y equals 1. If you're just asked to solve them, they're generally written, the answer is generally written in the form of an ordered pair, x comma y. But I've noticed this book just says as long as you label x and y, they're, they're accepting that as an answer. Now later, we're going to look at some applications of these where x might be the price of machines or something, and so you need to tell what each value means in context. Okay? But for right now, you can just write x equals and y equals. Pretty straightforward. Look familiar, I hope. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through. We're going to look at another one that's very similar to this, and I'm going to call on you to tell me what to do. So get your notes out. Let's stop the recording.